Band coming to you live from Falcon Gas Company here in Austin, Texas for a brand new episode of Kill Tony. Get up for Tony! That's clip. Austin, Texas, are you ready to have the best goddamn Monday night of your lives or what? Fuck yeah! How about a hand for Red Band, everybody? Hi, He's here. Everybody. My partner in crime. And guys, how about a hand for the band, huh? This is Kill Tony, brought to you by the Red Rose and the Yellow Rose. And that is the Kill Tony Band, brought to you by a delicious screwball peanut butter whiskey. Make some noise for Michael Gonzalez on the drums. That's John Dees on the keys. This is Matt Muling on guitar. And that's my good friend D Madness on the bass right there. A lot of fun stuff happening. Brought to you by Red Bull and, of course, the W Hotel. We're now using the promo code KILLTONY. You can save 25% on a Sunday or Monday night. So do that. Stay at the W. Fun times. Here's a little bit more about the amazing sponsors that made tonight's episode available for you here right now. Hey, y'all. Indeed, it is Tony Hinchcliffe here telling you that I am back out on tour with my stand-up comedy, lugging a bunch of my funniest friends with me all around the country. We're back at it. Salt Lake City, May 20th and 21st. Buffalo, June 10th and 11th. Atlantic City, New Jersey, June 24th and 25th. Tampa, Florida, July 15th and 16th. Houston, Texas, July 28th, 29th and the 30th. Dallas, Texas, the 12th and 13th of August. And August 26th and 27th, San Antonio, Texas. Nashville, Tennessee, making my long-awaited return September 29th, 30th, and October 1st. Excited to get back to Nashville, San Antonio, Dallas, Houston, Tampa, Atlantic City, and Buffalo, and of course, Salt Lake City, the home of my favorite religion, uh, all very soon. That's tickets available, TonyHenchcliffe.com, and uh, we'll see you out there. The biggest clouds, the coldest smoke, the smoothest experience. If you enjoy smoking the good stuff or CBD, but hate the throat and lung burning, then you gotta check out today's sponsor, Freeze Pipe. Freeze Pipe makes a unique line of freezable pipes, bubblers, bongs, and more, engineered to cool smoke by over 300 degrees. Freeze Pipe is your answer for the smoothest way to light up. I gotta tell you, I've been doing a lot of yoga lately, a lot of cardio. I think I'm in the best shape of my damn life. And I have always been an extreme blunt smoker. You know, I'm friends with Snoop Dogg and those types of people. You know, the blunt smokers if the, in the world, if you know what I'm talking about. However, lately I've been using this amazing freeze pipe to keep my lungs crystal clean and super clear and under control. And freeze pipe is the best way to do it. Red Band, you've been doing this yourself. Right? Oh, yeah. I love it. I've been using it every day. The secret is the freezable glycerin chambers that come on every piece. Pop one of these in the freezer for one hour, and as you smoke, it passes through this icy chamber. It instantly cools it down for a dramatically smooth and chilly toaks. Glycerin is a non-toxic fatty gel commonly found in food and sweeteners. It freezes quicker than water and stays frozen longer. Putting ice in your bong is one thing, but chilling smoke through a frozen glycerin chamber will change how you light up forever. With a 4.4 star rating and thousands of reviews, check out Freeze Pipe entire line of high quality glass at thefreezepipe.com and use code TONY for 10% off your order. That's thefreezepipe.com and use code TONY for 10% off. Shop today. Your throat and lungs will thank you. Are you guys ready to start tonight's show? Well, well, well. You guys are in for a special... Oh, wait a second. How could I forget to mention this is one of the rare times in which the great Ryan J. Ebelt is here. Yes. The official artist of the show since its inception. Every single tour poster, every single print, every single episode he draws all the way from Los Angeles, California. He's originally a Texan, and he's back. Speaking of a Texan, ladies and gentlemen, tonight's guest, an icon here in Austin, Texas, and around the world. One of my coolest friends, one of my best friends, one of my favorite musicians, Austin's own Gary Clark Jr. Wow. What? Where are we on a Monday? Oh, wow. Oh. Wow. Doesn't get much cooler than this people 
the great, the powerful Gary Clark Jr. is here, everybody. Yeah, yeah. I don't know what I'm doing here either, people. It's kind of strange, right? It's a pleasure, though. Gary gets it. He's a fucking comedy fan. He's a big Kill Tony fan. He's been following this show forever. We're going to have fun. Uh, and uh, you guys know how it works. Gary knows how it works. I pull a bunch Absolutely. of names out of a bucket. They do 60 seconds on the stage. You know their time is up when you hear the sound of a kitten. That means they have to bring it up, uh, wrap it up then, or else they're going to bring out the angry West Hollywood bear, <laughs> which basically is just loud, and it interrupts their set because you, they can't go any longer because they have to do a minute of stand-up comedy, and then I interview them afterwards, and we find out more about them. It's a big, live, crazy, improvised talent show. You guys get it? How about you in the balcony? Do you guys understand what's happening here? So, to start tonight's show, instead of pulling a name out of the bucket to start it, we like to start it with somebody who's ultra-consistent, who comes out and sets a goddamn standard for how it's done. Oh, by the way, how could I forget... This is very special. This is the one-year anniversary episode since my cancellation, everybody. So thank you. Thank you very much. Which is a good time for me to remind everybody that the comedian going up first tonight with a brand new minute, one of my favorite human beings in the world, once I came back here from being canceled, I made him a regular on the show. So now he's rich. He performs in arenas regularly with Joe Rogan. Ladies and gentlemen, the dreams that can come true. Brought to you by the great Hans Kim, everyone. Hey. I love it here in Austin because I never know if I'm going to be performing for retards or faggots. Yeah, a bunch of retards tonight. <laughs> My favorite are retarded faggots. They get offended over everything. <laughs> Love it here in Austin. It's the only city where you can see pickup trucks and roundabouts. <laughs> you can see them be like, what the hell am I in? God damn it. I'm in a circle. What is this, communism? Um, I wish that we hadn't built the wall. Now we're going to have to climb over that shit every time we want an abortion. <laughs> yeah. God damn. God damn Mexicans. Uh, <laughs> I, uh, I have a girlfriend now, and she's uh, fucking me on a regular basis. Thank you. She told me that I'm the best man she's ever been with, but the two people she dated before me were women, so <laughs> it's good to be third best at least. You know, I'm uh, the men's featherweight champion of Rachel's pussy. So. <laughs> Thank you. There it is, a minute, 20 seconds. We kept the bear away from you on that one. Hans Kim coming in here, proving that Asians can say any words that they want right now. <laughs> Just coming out guns a-blazing with the... R word and the F word. It is indeed <laughs> Asian Heritage Month, and you get to do whatever you want. <laughs> Happy Asian Heritage Month, everybody. It's the month of May. I'll never forget that one again. <laughs> oh, <that's right. laughs> that is it. This is the true one year anniversary episode. I love it. Hans, your life has changed in the past year. Tell us about it. Uh, I'm uh, performing for Joe Rogan. I have a lot of money. Um, <laughs> I moved out of the van. I get sex regularly. I would recommend it to anyone, really. Yep. <laughs> Absolutely. What else has been going on since the last time we saw you? How about the past week, Hans? Uh, this past week, I bought a little gun, uh, a Ooh. Shadow System MR920L. Uh, I also bought a bidet. Uh, wow. Did you get these from the same place? <laughs> no. No. It's a dangerous bidet, if so. <laughs> Yeah, it's a great bidet. It's a little strong, but I, I'm sure I'll get used to it. Oh, you will. You will. <laughs> what made you uh, want to get a bidet? Uh, just like it's, it's more efficient, you know? Like I don't have to do manual labor now. It's so what is it? Is it like a button? Does it do it automatically? It's a little dial. And is, it, is it a tushy? Uh, no. No. <laughs> Sorry. Where'd you get this from? Is that from? a sponsor? Uh, Amazon. 
<laughs> the okay. enemy. Now, is there a yeah. reason in particular? Did your girlfriend say something to you? Or <laughs> did you notice something about her, perhaps? No, it's just like I wanted to treat myself after doing the arena in uh, da- ah, Denver. Ah, you know. yes. What man who performs in arenas wipes his ass with toilet paper? <laughs> you are correct. I like that. That makes sense. Very, very fun. And you've been using it, and it brings you joy. Yes. How about the gun? What are you doing with this gun exactly, Hans? <laughs> uh, I'm just uh, checking the trigger. Just um, Perfect. Yes. Gun Safety 101 tells you to just check the trigger any chance you get. The old school of Alec Baldwin. Uh, <laughs> check the trigger. Holy shit. This is a fucking ticking time bomb here, Hans. And what made you get that gun in particular? Uh, I mean, I, th- I think it's like a cool thing to have. Like, uh, you know, if I was in the medieval ages, I'd have a sword, and now it's uh, 2022. I have a gun. I can shoot people now. I don't know this gun, Tony. Do you know what the gun is, or what's it look no, like, or is that a really smaller gun? Yeah. Well, how big is your gun? It's like a normal, like a. It's like a clone of a Glock 19. Oh, okay. No, it's American, America made. <laughs> Hell yeah. All right. Okay, Hans, and your love life is good. Yes, we're having amazing sex. Uh, well, I thought you were about to say we're having a baby. That was close. <laughs> Good Lord. Any, any pregnancy it? scares? No, we use a condom pretty regularly. When you say pretty regularly, <laughs> what are we talking about? 80%, 50%, 95 A hundred. Whoa. Okay, well, then that's totally regularly. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> pretty regularly would be less than a hundred. <laughs> She, uh, I can't believe I'm explaining stats to the Asian <laughs> guy. I mean, this is crazy. This really is 2022. The times are changing, folks. The white man is telling the Asian guy about stats and guns and shit. All right. Uh, I love it. So amazing sex. What does that mean to you? What exactly is amazing sex to a guy like you? You guys doing <laughs> Sudokus in the bedroom or something like that? <laughs> Um, I've been um, rubbing her pussy with my hand a lot. Whoa! Jesus Christ, Hans! Oh my God! Yeah. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> it's like middle school talk right there. <laughs> that doesn't sound comfortable at all. <laughs> we did find out last week that you do a weird thing. I asked you what your fourth favorite body part on a female is, and you said the navel. Uh, And then you described how you enjoy rubbing a girl's belly button. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) I think he said pushing it back in, didn't you say? (laughs) Yeah, I mean, it's a very beautiful part of a woman. Um, So interesting, right? (laughs) Yeah. uh, uh, They have a higher body fat, uh, so it's like softer than a man. How do you know this? <laughs> uh, just science. You ever rub the belly button while doing other things to a girl? You ever, you ever give her the old shocker, the old one in the belly button, two in the smelly button? <laughs> stupid. I can't believe this is what I do for a living. It's <laughs> unbelievably stupid. She, uh, she likes to spoon me. Uh, which is weird because usually it's all the way around, but she likes to she she likes to cuddle my butt. Wow. Do you have a you have a reasonable butt back there? She likes it. Uh, I don't know why. I think her ass is way better, but uh, I think my ass is kind of flat. Uh-huh. That means she's gassy. <laughs> Red band. What are you talking about? Interesting. Do you do anything to increase your butt size? Do you do squats or anything like that? Do you work out? I have a kettlebell. I try to do kettlebell swings. You have a single swings. kettlebell? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Hell yeah. What's the weight of this single kettlebell that you have? 35 pounds. Thir- Whoa, that's a pretty big one. Yeah. Okay. You ever think about getting a second 35-pound kettlebell and getting <laughs> fucking jacked? I'm having trouble with just one right now. <laughs> very, very interesting. 
All right, Hans. Well, you did it again. Another absolute killer minute with a bonus 22nd edition there. All new material. It's absolutely incredible. Your work ethic is absolutely insane, and you're pushing everybody to the moon. We love you. Way to start get the show started for us. It's Hans. Thank you, Tony. We see him every week. A brand new minute every single week. The regulars on the show are absolutely killing. But now we go to the bucket. This is where shit gets a little bit more wild because we're about to meet someone we've probably never met before. I might try that belly button shit. Huh? I might try that belly button shit when I go <laughs> oh, home. Gary's, Hans is teaching Gary how to manipulate the belly button during romance. Appreciate you, bro. You might have to write a song about that or something. I'm in love with your belly button. Stink finger. Go for it. <laughs> Make some noise for your first bucket pool of the night. His name is Stephen Farmer, everybody. Here we go. Here he comes. I do believe it's his first time on Kill Tony. Make some noise for Stephen Farmer, everyone. All right. Well, I hope you like me. Uh, but if not, that's cool. At least you got to see what it would look like if Tony Ox sold real estate. So... We got that going for us. Uh, I like the uh, shirts that people wear at the gym, like little goofy sayings on them. Like just like what the women wear, like they'll wear stuff like uh, squats. I thought you said shots. I don't sweat, I sparkle. I can't run, I'm a mermaid. No pain, no champagne, we'll run for chocolate, like all that kind of stuff. And then like dudes wear the most angry stuff of all time. It's like call 911. <laughs> Your max is my warm up. I hit the gym so I don't hit my wife. <laughs> is that that call 911 shirt was about? <laughs> That's it. All right, 56 seconds from Stephen Farmer. Hi, Stephen. How are you? Great. How are you? Good. This is your first time on the show, right? Yeah. I love it. I love it. And how long have you been uh, Donald Trump's campaign manager? <laughs> it's incredible. I love your look. How long have you been a lawyer for the Slytherin? <laughs> I know there's more coming. This is wild. Look at you. Uh, what do you do for work? Personal trainer. Personal trainer. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Look at that. You dress like a smart guy, but really underneath, it's just... Have you ever worked with anybody that only has one 35-pound kettlebell? <laughs> What would you recommend to Hans to increase his uh, butt size? What would you do to him? You're a personal trainer. I would say goblin squats with the 35 pounds. Goblin kettlebell. squats? Yeah. Can you show us exactly what a goblin squat is? You hold it like Can this. Can you do it without cum squat. coming out of your ass? Is that possible? <laughs> oh, we're getting warmed up here a little bit, folks. We're just, just hitting the bag a little bit. <laughs> you timed that perfectly. You were at full squat when I made the come out of your ass jokes. It was, you went too far. To, your timing was perfect. It's all about timing, you know? I love it. Absolutely. So how long have uh, you been doing stand-up comedy? Uh, 12 years. <laughs> Shut the fuck up. <laughs> what? Steven. Steven, stop it. No, you haven't. Yeah. What? Wait, what? What? <laughs> Twelve years. No. No, Stephen, no. No, you're kidding. That's one of your big jokes. Where have you been doing it for twelve years? Austin, Texas? The whole time. Okay. Um, all right. Uh oh shit. Oh shit. Oh, when Red Band hits that, there's barely anything anybody can do to bring it back, Stephen. Twelve years. Now what? Wow. Um, okay, what's the best thing that you've done in 12 years of stand-up comedy? What's, like, the highlight of your career? Just, like, featured at comedy clubs, that's it. Okay. Hey, who's your favorite person that you featured for? Uh, probably Greg Warren. I mean, no, I, okay. I actually opened... <laughs> yeah. Oh wait. my god. Wait, was that not a good minute? Was that not? Yeah. 
Oh, they like it. Okay. All right. He's asking. He's yeah, asking. It was like, I was like, I, I thought I did well. Was that not good for It was well? good. It was good. It was good. You know, I celebrated my 15-year anniversary this past Saturday, Saturday night, 15 years as a stand-up comedian for me. And... So I've been doing it only three years longer than you. Oh, yeah. No, no. My and career's pathetic. Yeah. Okay, perfect. Yeah. Good. Then, yes. All right. Yeah. Good. Well, Just also, how long have you been, like, how many times a month do you do it? Uh, I mean, I do it, like, th- at least three times a week. Okay. That's pretty good. That's a pretty good. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> My goodness. I can't, I can't give a right answer. How long have you been a personal trainer for? Uh, exact same time. I started both, like, the same time. Wow. Are you better at being a personal trainer? Or do you just have a bunch of fucking fat clients that just keep getting fatter? Tony, I've been working with him for two years, I think. <laughs> <laughs> when did you learn how to do that, Red Band? When did you learn how to make fun of yourself he like that? He taught me. I've been, w- I've been waiting a long time for you to do that. You know you could do that any time. <laughs> Oh, my God. Stephen Farmer. I love it. Your last name is Farmer. What do your parents do for work? Uh, my dad is a chiropractor. Wow, and, at least uh, someone in your family can crack people up. <laughs> oh, I've activated the... Bl- I've activated the backlights, everybody. That's the end of the... All right. How about mom? What does Mama Bear do? I don't want to get too sad about that. Oh shit! No, please hit a, hit us with it. Uh, she's been missing since 2005. <laughs> oh shit! Wait, isn't that around the same time you started doing stand up? Uh, Steven, this timeline is not looking good. <laughs> she left after your first joke. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Shut up. Shut up. Oh, this is not the show I thought I came to. Happy Mother's Day. Uh, How? (laughs) (laughs) Wow. Oh, my goodness gracious. This is epic, Stephen. I love this. You have a good sense of humor. We could tell you're a professional. What do you like to do for fun, Stephen? Uh, I got dogs. I got three dogs. Okay. How often do they run away? <laughs> <laughs> That's why I got them, because I can actually keep them. Hell yeah, absolutely. They can't go anywhere. They can't go anywhere. Um, how about a girlfriend? Is it, uh, I'd, imagine, I'd imagine that knowing a little bit about psychology that I know, that it must be hard to keep a relationship going if your mother is missing. I mean, yeah, it's, I'm not, uh, I don't have a relationship, mm-hmm. so I'm still single. When's the last time you were in a relationship? Uh, a serious one was yeah. like 2017. 2017. How long did that last for? Like three years. Three years. All right. That's pretty good. What happened? How did that end? Um, she was, uh, she broke it off, which I thought was really mature, but it turned out she was seeing another guy, you know? Right. Right. Personal it, trainer. No, he was like a fat guy. He was a what? He was like a fat guy. Oh, that's the worst. And she was a trainer herself, so I don't know. Oh, wow. Very interesting. She wanted a little fix-me-up. Yeah. Damn. All right. Let me ask you this. You're a personal trainer. You have women as clients, right? You ever make a move on any of your uh, people? They No, because they're already going after you. It'd be weird if you did that. It's like creepy stuff. So they're oh, they're going already after. going after you. Yeah. And you don't like that. You don't like a girl that likes you. You like someone that you need to for- force yourself upon in order to... <laughs> well, I, I live in Round Rock, so there's not a lot really happening. Whoa, there. Round Rock. Okay. It's starting to make sense now. Been doing 12 years of stand-up comedy in Round Rock. This is like basically like flying to L.A. for a Tonight Show audition for you. Yeah, making the long trip that you made here today. What kind of vehicle do you drive all the way from Round Rock? Honda Civic 2022 Sport. Whoa! Killing it. I like that you threw in the Sport there at the end. Your mom would be proud, Stephen. Your mom would be proud. Oh, shut the fuck up. He's having fun. Look at him. Look at this guy. 
<laughs> how, does she run away, or is there something sketchy about it? Like, yeah. Was if it, you, what do you? Where do you think your mom is? Uh, she's probably dead. Really? What makes you say that? Was she hiking or something? Well, she was a drug addict. Oh. And we lived in a small town in southeast Arkansas, so everybody knew about it. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, and then uh, abusive ex-husband who may have had something. To do, we're not sure. But we get all these like rumors. Oh so no. So we're like right around with my grandma, and we like pay like the crack addicts to. Uh, Oh, that's John. <laughs> that's not even Red Band. That means, that means John D's is. Yeah, so we like pay like. Pop goes the weasel. <laughs> why is that? Why is that the missing mother song? I don't really understand. <laughs> oh my goodness gracious! This is wrong. Yeah, this is cold. It case. really is. It's cold case files here. <laughs> I love it. So, Stephen, um, what is uh, what's a what's a goal or a dream of yours? Uh, to announce I do comedy and it doesn't seem pathetic. <laughs> okay. Okay. Red band. Anything for Stephen? You know, I mean. <laughs> Would you like to open up the secret show Thursday and do... Oh, look at that. 12-year comedy vet. You just got booked on a show on Thursday. Can you make it? Yes. All right. Catch him on the secret show. There's Stephen Farmer. Here's a big joke book made by the great Bonesai, Adrian Cavazos, here in Austin, Texas. Real Texas leather. Follow him on Instagram at Bonesai, B-O-N-E-Z-E-Y-E. You guys having fun out there yet? All right. I'm going to pull another name out of the bucket here. Okay, Heath Underhill is next on the show. Heath Underhill. This episode is already a roller coaster. One more time for Heath Underhill, everyone. You guys like dad jokes? I don't give a shit. I'm doing them anyway. When I was a little kid, uh, me and my dad were real close. We did everything together. We played games together. Our favorite game to play was hide and seek. I've, I've been it since 1994. Has anyone seen my dad? Dad jokes. Uh, when I was a little kid, my dad would say, Heath, whenever you go to take, whenever you go to bed, take a shower, splash on a little cologne, comb your hair. You never know, you might meet the girl of your dreams. And uh, I got, I got to say, it really worked because I've had so many wet dreams. <laughs> when I was nine, I asked, I asked Santa Claus for the ability to suck my own dick. My dad hasn't dressed up like him since. Dad jokes. Heath Underhill. Welcome. How's How are you? Good. You've been on this show before, right? No, sir. No? Well, well welcome. How are you? I'm, I'm good. You look like if a Mythbuster ate the other Mythbuster. <laughs> You're a myth buster and a belt buster. <laughs> this is incredible. Welcome to the show, Heath Underhill. I love that. What a cool name you have. Thank How you. old are you, Heath? 34. 34 years old. How long have you been doing stand-up? Three years. Three years. I love it. That's a good, reasonable answer. <laughs> it's not a shocking and appalling answer. <laughs> Three years. Nice. <laughs> good job, Heath. What do you do for a living? Uh, I'm a traveling warehouse worker. A traveling warehouse Whoa. worker. That's what? Yeah. That's a job I've never heard of before. Explain that <laughs> a little I just bit made better. It up. No. Uh, well, like uh, I just do warehouse work. I work for a company that sends me to understaffed warehouses. Okay, they send you, huh? Yeah. <laughs> what do you? What Best do you, and the brightest. <laughs> what exactly are you doing? Like what exactly? <laughs> are you doing at these warehouses? It's just manual labor. It's manual labor. Like forklift. Yes, sort yeah. of. Yeah. Looks like you've been pretty good at lifting a fork. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Come on. Come on. No, oh, stop it. 
Stop it. Also a spoon lift worker. Uh, <laughs> all right. Anyway, so you work at a warehouse. What, you live here in Austin? Uh, no, I'm trying to move. Uh, I live in uh, Tennessee right now. Okay. What part of Tennessee? Uh, Chattanooga area. All right. The old Chattanooga choo-choo, which mm-hmm. is what you like to do to food. <laughs> Likes to choo-choo it and then swallow it down. You see that? Chattanooga choo-choo joke. The rare Chattanooga joke. There. <laughs> Thank you, Red Band. So, uh, Heath Underhill. What's, what do you do for fun out in Chattanooga? Um... Uh, I got a I got a lot of different hobbies. I play video games. Nice. Uh, I like to eat. I like yes. to cook. <laughs> Indeed. Absolutely. Um, I tried gardening for a while. It didn't work. Gardening. Yeah. yeah. Really interesting. Wow. Yeah. What were you trying to grow? Uh, food. <laughs> <laughs> that makes sense. <laughs> Gary, you have a garden, right? Not anymore. No, what happened? Gave up. Oh, no. That's what he did with his physical health. So <laughs> it's all the same. <laughs> oh, Red Band. And when Red Band hits the pig button, you know you're fucked up, man. <laughs> okay, Heath, I love it. So much fun. And you traveled here to Austin. What have you done for fun in Texas so far? Um, I just got here yesterday. Uh, so I just kind of... Woke up and drove here. Uh, I got a family about four hours away. Okay, so they live in Round Rock, too. Very cool. Uh, <laughs> that's awesome. Four hours away. Which direction four hours? Uh, east. Whoa. East. Houston? That's rough. That's yeah. Almost to El Paso, right? That's, well, not even. Other way. It's even other way. Much, okay, <laughs> shut up. El Paso? <laughs> shut up. It's like... Oh my god, <laughs> I'm so wrong. <laughs> oh my god, wow, that is a st- that is dumber than I thought You're it right. was. Thank You're you, right. you, you guys are right. I was wrong on that one. You're right. You only this been here one a little t- bit. You get it. <laughs> Four hours east, so like Corpus Christi. Uh, oh, ruckus again, ruckus again. Houston. I thought four hours east to here was fucking Florida. Uh, so, think- so like Laporte, Laporte, Texas. So like- Wait, what? Galveston? Oh. Nacogdoches, Texas. That Wait, area. what? Yeah, okay. Nacogdoches. What is it, Nutrageous? Where are you from? <laughs> All right. Uh, uh, I do go up a lot in Tennessee. Uh, in Tennessee. Uh, yeah, I go up three or four times a week in Tennessee. Okay. And what, 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 what's the scene like there? What are you dealing with? You um, up there with musicians, or is it all comedians? A lot of frogs. <laughs> uh, it's... Uh, it's kind of a, no. it's kind of a small scene, but everybody's pretty decent. But there's you can't get up a whole lot. How about your love life? What are we talking about here? You got yourself a little fucking thicky with glasses. Uh, well. Whoa, got weird in here again. Okay, okay. Welcome to the serious show, everybody. We were here for the one night where the audience was super serious. Do you have a thicky with glasses? Uh. No, no, it's yeah. kind of slow right now. No, I love know? it. You on any dating sites or anything like that? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Farmers only? <laughs> he said he was a gardener. <laughs> All right. Heath, what's, uh, do you have any special skills or talents, anything that would surprise us about you? Um, Perhaps you know how to yodel or yo-yo or anything that begins with yo or anything else? Actually, really? I can yo-yo pretty decent. Really? Yeah. Do you have a yo-yo on you? I, other pants. Uh. <laughs> What's your greatest talent in the world? If I never said anything about the yo-yo, what would you have answered with? Um, I mean, I can play a little music, but I'm not. I'm not like. What kind of music I, can I, you play? I feel like you're looking at me. I really didn't yeah, want to say. Yeah, I just, feel like you could crush, Like you'd be the guy to crush on American Idol or something. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. No, I'm not that good. Hundred percent. I can see it. We're the voice, really. You seem like more of a the voice kind of guy, where they yeah, yeah, yeah. spin around and they're like, yeah, oh, <laughs> oh shit, <laughs> oh. This guy's not a star. He's a planet. Whoa. We have Where been given a yo-yo. This is a first in the history of the show. The great Yoni. Unbelievable. What a world we live in. Should call him Yo-Yoni after that. After where, he, where the fuck by. did you get a yo-yo? That's incredible. <laughs> the hardest part is getting it around his finger, ladies and gentlemen. That is his greatest trick. Whoa. Oh, shit. Whoa. 
Whoa! Hell yeah! Walk the wow. dog. Walk the dog. Wow. We just got word the last comedian's mother came back. That was so good. That was so exciting. You're bringing people back together, Heath. Yoni, where the fuck did you get that yo-yo from? He, he has a mustache and suspenders. He has two yo-yos on him. That is incredible. <laughs> that is absolutely incredible. That was in your bag, Yoni? You keep a yo-yo in your bag at all times. Holy shit. I'm not surprised. <laughs> serial <laughs> killer shit. Surprised. Yoni is one of these people. I keep Yoni very close to me. Uh, a really, really, really good friend. I, I, very, very close. He, th- I once asked this guy, this is a true story. I'm like, Yoni, you don't have a fucking measuring tape, do you? And he literally goes, Zzz, like that. And he had a measuring tape. He's a weirdo. He carries this backpack that's just rock solid, always filled to the absolute brim. But the fact that you keep a single lonely yo-yo in there, just incredible. Absolutely wild. Yoni, do you know how to yo-yo? Really? Do you think you're better than him? Oh, oh, shit. He already gave up the camera. He's Whoa. Ready. He's ready. Yoni's gonna yo-yo. Hey, 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 hey. Here he is, our resident Jewish consigliere. You know him from his suspenders and the classic mustache. Whoa. The crowd goes absolutely wild. Wow. Oh, my goodness. Oh, look at the walk. Oh, he's going to have an attitude for weeks after this. Look at this. This man just found a star is born, ladies and gentlemen. He has been waiting perhaps every episode of the show for me to ask anybody if they've ever yo-yoed before. (laughs) He approaches the stage with a yo-yo, plays the long game, doesn't make it about himself. I fall right into the fucking trap and look at him. He is smiling ear to ear. I see he's operating the camera. It is shaking. <laughs> Did you see when he, he goes, hold this, and he just holds the camera? Yeah, it <laughs> he was, was very bizarre. Stage before you finished asking. I mean, ready. it's like, wow. It's like he just made that segment happen. <laughs> wow. Yoni, do you think you could do a better minute of stand-up comedy than him, too? (laughs) No, he's not as excited Ah. by this at all. He's holding on to the camera. Yoni just hid behind that camera deeply. (laughs) I love it. Um, Heath Underhill, congratulations. Very much fun. I love having, uh, you know, all different types of people up here. I'm glad you had your first time here. This is super cool. All the way from Tennessee, you signed up. You got up. How do you feel? I uh, feel great. I always wanted to do this. So. Welcome to Austin. There you go. Appreciate Welcome it. to Austin, Texas, the new comedy capital of the world. Heath. Heath. Hey. We're going to try to get Roseanne to move here. Did you know that, Gary? Yeah. I heard she was I love her. Around. Roseanne was here last Wednesday. She I fucking heard. killed harder than I've seen anybody kill in a very long time. And we are trying very hard. To get her here to Austin, Texas. Dope, so ah. be on the lookout for that. She's such a nice person, too. Like, she's, she's a sweetheart. Cold blooded assassin. Your next comedian is Spencer Pogue, or, or Pogue, Pogui, or Pogue, Pogi, Spencer. Spencer Pogue. Ooh. Here he comes. One more time for Spencer, everybody. I'm not blind. When does the minute start? Okay, I started it. It's, I, I only have just like one minute of a battery life left, so it's just, I just, I need to keep track. Thank you. Who here likes impressions? I have one. Here's old man Kanye West. Huh? That's a, that's a noise he makes. Here's here's old man Kid Cudi. <laughs> Wait. There 
you go, Spencer. Prepared as much for his closer as he did his opener. Uh, Spencer Pogue. Welcome to the show, Spencer. How are you? How's it going, buddy? How are you? You okay? You're one of the funniest serial rapists we've ever had on this show. I'm a little scared, this is, Tony. <laughs> this is, You've had a lot of them. This is wild. One glove, one cape. Yeah. I mean, this is an interesting look. Spencer, how's it going? It's going all right. How long you been doing stand-up comedy? What the fuck was that? What, what was that? It was... Everything. Don't tell me it's 12 years, please. Needed. Don't say 12 years. Three years. Three years. Yeah. All right. And you're a little bit goofy. You're a little bit weird. It yeah. works at open mics. Comedians like that. And you performed in front of a live audience. And you got to see how that goes right now. Yeah. That, was, that was my first minute. Right. That's different. Well, yeah. Me. Well, sure. But if you did five minutes, would it have been like that times five? You see what I'm saying? Or perhaps if you did a 20-minute set, <laughs> would you not have a minute of that in which it's sort of like... I just have to build up dramatic tension sometimes. Ah. Uh, it's, it's, it's theatrical. Yes, bombing it's called. <laughs> yes, I know. I know. We've done this. It's like, you know, that's a part of it. You have to have one minute to I'm have... I'm sorry, everyone. Oh, Spencer, oh. it's okay. It's okay. And I, I hate being pelted with vegetables, and I totally am not out of lettuce. Wow, still bombing, folks. It's almost incredible. It is incredible. I love it. Spencer, what do you do for work? I, uh, right into the tip of that microphone. I recently... I'll tell you. Recently, I... Who told you I you're changed. funny? What? <laughs> Who told you you're funny? Like three years ago when you're like, I'll start stand-up. Um, Classmates uh, or something? Weed. Weed told me I was funny. Weed, all right. So, a solid object. So like, yeah. And then I was like, I was like following the, like... The Do you always wear a cape? I'm going to stop your ramblings. Oh, no, no. Do you always... No? Just when this you go is, on stage? Yeah. Just, and yeah. this is how long you've been doing the cape thing for? About three years, yeah. Oh, my God. You've been doing it the whole time. Yeah. Oh, my God. I thought maybe this was a new experiment or no. something like that. And you're like, fuck, I felt you so stupid you... up there with my cape. I can't believe I wore a cape on Kill Tony. You know... You get that, like, sticky octopus, you can throw it against the wall, and it's still fun, but pe- well, people don't know you can just wa- rinse it off with water, and then it's, it's still a sticky octopus. Wow. I get what he's I, saying, I but what that. the fuck are you talking about? Like, yeah. I, my are, you, are you on the spectrum at all? For real. Seriously. <sighs> I don't think this guy's got Wi-Fi whatsoever. That's, that's uh, nice. <laughs> Well, that's there's, Spectrum. There's no connection going on up there. I think, I think this guy's on dial-up, Red Band. Yeah. You've got... M- Fucking unbelievable. Hell yeah. You hear that? That's a weird sound, yeah. that laughter thing, huh? Yeah. The old rare, rare treat. Spencer, what's the best set you've ever had? How did that go for you? Sorry, I'm just, I'm just trying to get over it. This is the first time I ever put my phone in a bag. Before. I know. Welcome, welcome to baller shit. You finally did something. Are you okay in there? This is like oh. the first time we've been apart. It's like... Oh, my goodness. I'm, I'm scared. I yeah. bet you kill at open mics, right? Uh, yeah. Yeah, Every I now and then. People, uh, I, yeah. I remember yeah. open mics. People love people like this mm. at open mics. I think this would translate like in TikTok. Yeah. You know, like uh, 15 seconds. Yeah. Spencer, what's a redeeming quality? Spencer, over here. Over Everybody hates you. Tell us. Right, right. Tell us something about you that will make us all like you and want to keep you up here more for more fruitful conversation. Give us something, anything at all. So I'm married. Whoa! What? Oh my God. No. Sister or cousin? Oh <laughs> shit! Red band. Uh, 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 uh. Oh my goodness. Oh. <laughs> Spencer's pissed, dude. When he comes in here next week with a gun, I you're going down first, if you bro. Call me, if you end up calling me corn fed, I fucking love corn. Corn's delicious. Right, totally. Nobody yeah. asks that in question. In every shape and form, uh, corn's. Are you really fantastic. married, Spencer? I really am. How long have you been married for? About three years. Three years. Mm. You got married and immediately started doing stand-up comedy. Are you married to the game? I, okay, I did comedy. Yeah. Oh, yes and yes. Yeah. Is she on stage with you right now? Yeah. Mm. 
Right. Okay. Where'd you meet this girl at? Uh. Uh. This is I was your. Just a boy. I was a man. Okay, like I was a man. I was legally aged man, and I met her at a uh, international student uh, meeting because one of my roommates was from uh, Pakistan. So she's Pakistani. Are you making this up? Is any no, of this she's true? She's from Malaysia. Okay, she's but Malaysian. She's ch- Chinese. Whoa, okie dokie. Uh, somehow that's the most racist thing I've ever heard in my entire life. When he went like that before, I mean, it's like there's some, you can't really talk I'm, about another race and go I'm like that. I'm from Oklahoma, but I'm Swedish. Okay. Yeah. I don't think I'm so I'm Irish. All right, you're bombing. That's what work. you're doing. Work. You're a continuous bomber. You are yeah. never ending. You are basically Vladimir Putin, just... Innocent, innocent bystanders being taken down by your fucking yeah. continuous barrage. That looks like merit badges. That's what the sounds look like. That's amazing. What? The, the sound effects is like a sticker pad. It's, a, it's like a boom, boom, clap noise. Yes. Wow. Fuck yeah. This is it's what open mics are buttons. like, everybody, That's if you're amazing. wondering what it's like out there on this circuit. And this is what good comedians have to start around for years. You're surrounded by people like this. Huh. And it's like, oh, Spencer in his cape. Does but anybody like, have some water? Some water? Water. They absolutely do. In fact, I'm going to buy you a bottle. It's coming at you right over there. You can go get it. I've had enough of you. Spencer Pogue, everybody. There he goes. There goes Spencer. Good day. <laughs> I want whatever he's on after this. I'm scared, Tony. <sighs> Gary, I can't believe you didn't leave during that. I really want to. I can't believe to. you're still here. You really are a good friend. How about a hand for Gary Clark Jr., everybody? He could have left. That is a true security hazard. This is Spencer a trip, man. Pogue. This is a trip. I'm going to end up on his wall on some dartboard or something like that. I can feel it. All right, let's try something else. You guys ready for another regular, huh? This is a new regular here on the show, everybody. He performs when David Lucas can't make it. Make some noise for LSH, everybody. Where my beautiful women at? Make some noise right now. Mm, y'all sound strong. Y'all fucked around and had a snack before y'all came here. I know you did. Mm, ain't nothing stronger than a woman with a full belly. You know what I'm saying? Can I just say that women are the most indestructible thing on the fucking planet? Can I say that? Because fellas, us fellas, man, shit, we stub our toe and um, we ready to call out for work. Like, uh, I ain't going to be able to make it, man. I ain't gonna make it. But meanwhile, women will push a fucking water heater out their coochie and act like ain't shit happened. Just, ah! Uh, Make it drop. That's some wet ass pussy. They'd be like, hold on, bitch. Hold on. Shit, you coded three times and you were legally dead for two minutes. Man, you somebody's mother. Speaking of mothers, man, ain't nothing worse than when a mother doesn't know that they baby ugly. It's so sad. It's like a secret that they don't even know about. Man, they out here showing people and shit. I used to have a lady that I used to work with like, oh my God, you have to see my son. You have to see him. Oh my God, God did this, God did this. He got a face of an angel. Y'all, that baby look like Morgan Freeman. I said, this was not God, this was the devil who did this shit. Yeah, yeah. There you, there you go, LSH, absolutely. Very good, Ellis. Set up, punch, set up, punch. I like it. How are you? I'm good, man. Yeah? I'm good, man. How Hell do you yeah. feel? What's been happening? We haven't seen you in a while. Man, got a new job. Yeah, what do you do now? Um, working at Amazon as a delivery driver and shit. Actually had my first day of training today. It was fucking crazy. Okay. Hell yeah. They what? were uh, teaching me how to fucking like ring the doorbell and run the fuck off real fast. <laughs> that was the fir- first order of business. They said, I don't give a fuck about the package. Just ring that bitch and go be gone. Go be gone. Very cool. So that's a good job, right? That, does that give you benefits or anything like that? 
Uh, yeah, it, it get me dental and shit. Day one too. It's actually a really good place to work. Oh, you know about this? Yes. Yeah. How do you know about that? Because uh, Amazon opened up next to uh, where I live. That's why that guy was in town saying that he was a traveling warehouse manager. Oh. <laughs> Tales of Pflugerville, everybody. <laughs> Hell yeah. Yeah, play that sad music, man. I'm feeling sad as fuck. Oh, shit. Okay. Yeah. You gonna riff a little yeah, bit Yeah, my, my fucking barber fucked me up, y'all. I had to break up with my barber and shit. It was so sad. Wait, why'd you have to break up with your barber? That motherfucker had... I, y'all ain't seen me in a minute, but my hairline was fucked up, like at an incline and shit. That motherfucker gave me the Hell Hitler fucking lineup. You know what I'm saying? I said, bitch, I can't even go to the army with this shit. It's linked back like this. God damn. What happens if you don't touch the hairline? Like, uh, does anyone do that? I'm I trying to find it. I don't know. You don't, you don't touch it? <laughs> <sighs> Is that what happens? Yeah. So, uh, did you find a new one? No. That's the saddest thing about it, man. I'm did you have a black still... barber or a white barber? Yeah, he was mixed, so it was 50 50. Oh, shit. Hell yeah. Ultra he looked... light skin. I said, shit. I'm taking oh, a chance. Oh, no. Oh, no. Incredible. Well, maybe Gary can recommend a cool black barber for you. Nope. I put a hat <laughs> on my shit for the past 20 years, man. For real. Maybe he can recommend a good hat store for you. Uh, I got always you has good home. hats. Fucking beanies, man. I love it. So, Ellis, you had to break up with your barber. What else is going on? You got this new job? I was trying to think of a lie real quick, but... um. Uh, oh, I got a high school reunion coming up. Uh huh. Yeah, I'm not going though. Why? I just don't like nobody that I graduated with. Right. Did you have a reputation in high school for anything? Yeah, man. I was just that motherfucker that was always smiling and cooler with everybody and shit. Uh huh. Uh, yeah. Did you play sports or were you like a theater brat? Oh no, I fucking hated theater, motherfuckers. I was like, you act, bitch. Wow, but, homophobic. Okay. Yeah. Nah, man, but I don't know. It's just the motherfucker. I don't know. It's just weird. It, they think because time passed that we friends now and shit, and that's not how that worked. Oh, you're you know, on like Facebook. A, huh? Like on Facebook. Dude, I love your jokes, man. Let me grab the mic so I can go ahead and show you how it's done. I'm like, bitch, you can't do what I do. That motherfucker, the cameras be on there. The fucking lights be on all these people. They'll be stuttering worse than Jared Nathan in this motherfucker. Bro. Oh, shit. That's a little inside Hey, baseball. Hey, I love Jared Nathan. Hold up, hold up. I love him. How He's... dare you make fun of a That's... special needs Canadian like that? <laughs> it is not nice, Ellis. Red, red band, come on. <laughs> Ellis, what else is going on? What's your living situation like? Because you've been unemployed for a while. You got the new job at Amazon, but you just started today. So what's lo- what are you? What are we talking about? Tell us about the struggle. Oh man, I got. I, we can. I mean, how long we got? Shit. I mean, fucking uh, lost my apartment. Bro, or uh, fucking the lease is up, and uh, I moved back with my mom and them. Wait, what? Where's your mom at? Uh, Elgin, Texas. How far away is that? Like thirty-five minutes and shit. Oh, okay. Yeah, man. It's tough. So basically El Paso. <laughs> no. It's like going towards Houston. Right. Yeah, man. Okay. Oh. What does mom do? I feel like she's a good cook. Am I correct? Oh, yeah. She got six kids. She got to be a good, good cook. Hell, yeah. yeah Lots man. of butter and stuff? A lot of butter, bro. Bro, you got some pretty ass eyes, dude. No homo. Oh, thank you. That shit is like mesmerizing. Thank you. Yeah, I should see it, bro. Like, I be in the green room trying to figure out how to talk to this motherfucker, and he, I'm just stunned. I'm just, when can I? They're blue eyes. <laughs> They're blue eyes. It's a white person thing. Yeah. <laughs> Facts. It That's really fact. is. Black people try sometimes. They try with those contacts, but it's a little bit, a little bit. I like it. I like it. A little bit shaky, right? But I don't know if white people are allowed to say that, but I'm good, sorry. I can, I, can say with, I can say with no hesitation, I truly believe that Black people with contacts, colored contacts, it's a little bit weird. We notice. Like, like no, no, no one, no like, one, no one has ever been like, wow, do you see the beautiful natural green eyes on <laughs> Stefan? <laughs> I went, see, I went to high school with a Stefan. He was the point guard. Naturally. Of course. He was. He was very, very talented. All right, Ellis, you're sitting down. You're very comfortable tonight. Extreme sweatpants, a very loose-fitting T-shirt. I love it. You are 
Without I just, it. Shit, man. I don't know. These are my motherfucking people, man. I'm on the best podcast in the goddamn United States of America. Yeah. Of America. Y'all better make some noise like you That's out. That's true. You know what's crazy? My boss, right? He watches Kill Tony and shit. Oh, the Amazon boss. Yeah, he Jeff was like... Jeff Bezos. Awesome. No. I can't believe he's a fan of the show. I love this. Another billionaire. Elon is a fan. We have a lot of... We have a big billionaire fan base here. Hell yeah, man. But he was like, oh my God, I fucking love Tony and everything like that. And I'm like, okay, bitch, when do I get my badge? Like, fuck. He goes, you're LSH, y'all. But I just figured, like... Kill Tony is like a fucking fraternity or some shit. Or like a cult. Because mother... Like, I just thought about it. Cause I lady- can tell you work for Amazon now because it takes you two days to deliver your jokes. Oh. <laughs> that, was, that was prime. God damn it. <laughs> I'm trying to get in the goddamn rhythm. Tony said, oh, bro, you know what? Huh. Someone messaged me and said... Ellis, you're a fucking bitch. I hate you. Tony's giving you way too much power. And I'm like, bitch, have you seen the show? Like, right. God damn. It's like watching Shin... Uh, what is it? Shin... Shin- oh, the God. movie about the Jews, bro. Whoa. Jews. Whoa. Whoa. Uh, uh, Shin- Shin- Schindler's List. Oh, my goodness. Well, Fuck the joke now, because it didn't took too long. This what is like the... a Jew being up here and being like, that black movie about that one day of the week, what is it? <laughs> it's not Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Saturday, Sunday. I can't quite remember. What is that black movie? How dare you talk about Schindler's List like that? My goodness gracious. Have you ever seen that movie? Schindler's, Schindler's List, yes. <laughs> Wow, this, you is might. What, this is what you get for making fun of Jared Nathan, by the way. This is fucking some of that sweet, sweet Canadian karma coming at you. Hey, I love Jared Nathan. What the fuck, man? That's my dude. All right. I Will you Jared. watch Schindler's List and then do a scene for us uh, next time you're on stage uh, from Schindler's List? I mean, yeah, fuck it. Why not? I can okay. do that, yeah. All right, Ellis H., you did it again. Another new minute from Ellis. There he goes, everybody. We're going to keep it moving along. We're having fun here. This is the show. We're watching Ellis H. grow in front of our very eyes. Actor turned comedian. Yeah. Local resident. Yeah. This is tough, man. It's not easy. It's tough, man. Much respect. It's not easy. Hans Kim makes it look easy. Sure. Let's see what happens next. Make some noise for Julian Sales, everybody. Julian Sales. Let's see what happens here. Here he is. One more time for Julian, everybody. All right. So uh, I'm originally from Pensacola. I heard you guys out here in Austin actually like shrooms. Is that right? Oh, shit. All right. So uh, a lot of people either like to eat the shrooms or drink the tea, right? I personally like to drink the but, but, but. I like to drink the tea, all right, if you can't tell. <laughs> anyway, so a lot of people find that hard to get down because of the flavor and stuff like that. Well, I was tripping one of my friends. I asked her, you know, like, hey, do you have a T-shirt, a rag, a coffee filter, something like that so we can strain these out, right? She's like, hang on just a second. She goes to her room, comes back out with some panties. I'm like, all right, girl, you know, go to load it up. I got to tell you, it really enhances the flavor, all right? So if you're having trouble getting it down, pussy-flavored mushroom tea is like the best thing going, dude. I got to tell you. Now, depending on who you do it with, sometimes it gives a nice little crunch. I'm going to bottle it up, sell it, call it good old shroom in the loom. So see me after the show, all right? Fuck yeah, all right. I'm one of the funniest comedians of the night, exclusively here to sell mushrooms, everybody. It's- <laughs> Still, the, so far, one of the best sets of the night out of the bucket. Literally, just here to sling mushrooms. I mean, my goodness, you have eaten so many mushrooms, you are beginning to look like one. Do you know that? <laughs> Straight up shiitake over here. Julian Sales, how long have you been doing stand-up? Uh, four years. Have you ever thought about calling yourself Scarret Top? <laughs> oh... <laughs> How long? Three years? Four years. Four years, absolutely, with a strong, deep voice. What do you do for a living? Uh, right now, I'm uh, working at the library across the street. I figured if uh, 
You well, know, if, if Vulcan wouldn't hire me, they would at least have to see my face every single fucking day, right? Wait, That's wh- a good move, right? What does that mean? If they wouldn't hire me as a door guy here, I even signed up for big... La- you know, I, I got to make my face known. I got to be a little gnat. You Is that know? what you want? You want to be part of it? Uh, yeah, I definitely want to be a part of the scene. I just what? moved here from Pensacola to be here. So. Okay. How long ago did you move here? Uh, just three weeks ago. And you already got a job at the local library. That yes, has to sir. be scary as fuck, right? <laughs> we don't have books. It's definitely, thank you. It's definitely a oh, bar. Oh, it's a bar yeah. called the library. Right across the street. Oh, yeah. okay. <laughs> Very good. Um, yeah, that's a, that yeah. should be scary as fuck still, I guess. That's <laughs> Interesting that you work at a place called the library when you are unbookable. Oh. Somebody hit the whip. Yes, sir. Actually, yes, sir. actually. I'm actually on a show here at the Fallout Theater where Ariel Isaac Norman, I love May it. 14th. So. I love it. No, I believe that you are indeed bookable. I like your style. Uh, Thank you. What do you do for fun? You seem like a guy that has a lot of hobbies. <laughs> What's your method of transportation, first uh, of all? Let's start there, because I'm oh, guessing shit. it's something that doesn't have an engine. <laughs> Wind power. Skateboard or bicycle? Tell the truth. The bird scooters? Yeah. Yeah. Look at that. You're pretty good at that. So you travel exclusively by bird. And the Even bus. though you look like you travel by broomstick. <laughs> A witchy woman. <laughs> there you go. Julian, what else? Tell us more about you. Uh, so, uh, again, came from Pensacola. Um, you say gay kid? <laughs> a what gay kid? Say? Pensacola, Florida. No, no, but you said a gay kid from Pensacola. Oh, no, no. Did I say that? Yeah. No. Sounded like it. Yeah, you did. You just came out of the closet like live it, yeah. on Kill Tony. Congratulations. An incredible maneuver. You know what? Just for that, he did such a good job yo-yoing earlier. I'm going to let Yoni suck your dick right now. It's very exciting. He's not moving. Uh, he does have a nice mustache. I yeah. love it. Okay. So, uh, from Pensacola, Florida, what are, what are you famous for in Pensacola? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. The fact that you actually make that noise while looking <laughs> exactly like the type of guy that would make that noise is quite incredible. <laughs> Probably. It is absolutely wild. Uh, so, no, I did uh, acting, improv, directing, and stand-up for probably the past four years there. Um, I actually hosted uh, something. God damn it. Yeah. Uh, it's called The Secret Comedy Show, Pink Cola. You may, I don't know. But, yeah, so it was totally benounced on what actually happens here. But... Uh, when I moved here, I gave away over nine different venues and stuff like that. So uh, I had a fun time there, and that's probably it. That's I have probably no idea what the fuck you're talking about. <laughs> How often do you eat mushrooms? You talked about uh, mushrooms. So I took 46 grams of peyote on my 30th birthday. Oh, wow. my God. I've been good ever since, all right? So, are you yeah. talking about real peyote or like synthetic? No, no. actual like mis- yeah. uh, like ground up peyote. So let me ask gr- you, yeah. where did you do this? What did you do? What was the <laughs> highlight? What was the low light? Oh shit, he just turned into Dave Chappelle right then. Look at that. <laughs> All right, so uh, highlights was uh, I did a- access a Kashik record, right? Where you have like all knowledge of all things, right? <laughs> I think, I think. Uh, the ceiling fan turned into, like, four alien heads, which they just say, like, oh, you're just Persian, and that's your ancestors coming to watch over you while you trip, right? Right, of course. They always take over the ceiling fan, of course. So, uh, this was a 24-hour trip, all right? So, everybody who says, yeah, I want to do peyote, they're fucking idiots, all right? So, I'm up at at my friend's house, uh, and... It's like 4 o'clock in the morning, right? And I hear this noise off to the side, and it's like, whatever. I thought it was cats fighting, right? All of a sudden, I look over, and it's a damn possum 
walking up. I'm like, oh my god. So like at first, like I'm like scared, but the animalistic instinct kicked in with a peyote. So I just go, <laughs> right. And uh, about that time, one of the neighborhood like people were doing a morning jog. So I'm pretty sure they thought I was on meth, just like all you guys, right? All right. Wow, you're right. That was 24 hours. That's incredible. Wow. Julian Sales, what's your love life like? You see, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. He's literally, I've always wondered what happened to Butthead from Beavis and Butthead. He, he moved to Pensacola, Florida, spent all of his money, and now exclusively just does psychedelics. Uh, Ever so since they stopped making music videos, you ran out of shit to talk about. <laughs> So uh, I started, uh, my first mic was at the Creek in the Cave and stuff, uh -huh. and it started, keep, really? went back a couple like times, Really? like you were right? born in a cave, so that's yeah. perfect. Stupid. I don't know how to make fire, but the fire signal. Anyways, caveman. Anyways, so went there the wow. third time, and uh, pretty much said I was homeless. You know, I, I need a sugar mama. Got a number right after the show, dude. So I was like, fucking set, right? So uh, she's been fun in my whole process here. Okay, so you have found a sugar mama. I am looking for another one. She's kind of cheap, though. I don't. <laughs> Nothing worse than a cheap sugar mama. Everybody knows that. That is a, more of a sour mama, if you ask me. Absolutely incredible. Most interesting thing about you before I let you go. If you had to give us one thing of your entire life that would be the most interesting thing about you, <laughs> could be anything. Uh, so I was in the Coast Guard for a while doing Ooh. drug busts and migraine oh. addiction. Wait, okay, wait, you were in the Coast Guard for a while and then what? I got addicted to drugs and then got kicked out. It was what, honorable. What, what <laughs> honorable? <laughs> What drugs did you get addicted to in the Coast Guard? Oh, uh, so. <laughs> um, you can pass a drug test on Spice, right? So I was a, a, a Latter day Spice Boy, if you would call it, you know? Oh. Yeah, so you would do Spice, you know. Um, my first time, uh, I don't know. Doing cocaine was fun. Right. Because so, that gets out of your system quick, you know? Seems like you would like that. Is yes. there any drug that you haven't done that you want to try? May I, I suggest I fentanyl? <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Pure, pure <laughs> fentanyl. <laughs> All right. We're going to keep it moving along. There goes Julian Sales, everybody. We're going to keep it moving. Holy shit. This is wild tonight. It's a wild one. You guys still having fun out there, huh? We got a little cowboy over here. All right, let's see what happens next. Could be a breakout star any moment. Make some noise for Josh Stram, everyone. Let's see how this goes. Here comes Josh. He's running to the stage. Here he is, Josh Stram. Woo, kill Tony! We got some great couples here, some beautiful people. I made it about two years in my relationship, and my girl, uh, she decided to surprise me uh, <laughs> with a third person, and uh, <laughs> I did not like him. <laughs> yeah, he was a couples counselor. <laughs> I was so confused sitting on this guy's couch, like, I shaved my balls for this. $200 an hour to find out that I'm the bad guy? Could have told us that for free. So could your sister. One more, meow, meow. I'm very high. Oh, I did the joke backwards. Um, are there any cops here? <laughs> I think we should pay cops more, like a million dollars a year. Because if a cop made a million dollars here, he'd have to think really hard before he shot a person of color. I'm racist, but uh, I got racist kids in private school. I can't afford to get suspended. 
Whoa. My goodness, there's the bear. Uh, wow, that was yeah. interesting, Josh. You had, yeah, yeah. Ev- you had everything going for you, and then right at the end, you just lit yourself on fire. Yeah. Super, yeah. super awkward, very self-destructive behavior. Yeah, I didn't want to finish early, and I, uh, I fucked it up. Do I you it think up. it benefits you to say colored person instead of black person there? <laughs> or is, it, is that by design? Well, I think they also shoot Latinos. I think they do. Okay. I don't think it's exclusively them shooting blacks. I'm not a cop. I don't know. I don't want to judge. But I think they kill a lot of people. Yeah, of you had yeah, such a good you joke. You were doing good. You were doing so good. You were at 53 seconds. You could have literally said, that's my time. And then you went into this very interesting. It's an edgy bit. Yeah, I've been. I've been uh, it's, 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 that's a racist bit, not edgy. <laughs> I don't think it's racist. How is it racist? Yeah, Red Band. I mean, I don't know if it's actually racist. It's just The bit is I want to. Not cut. worth it. I agree. I agree. Yeah, it's I'll, tricky. I'll, I, I did. I fucked it's up. It's very tricky. Why do you use the word colored and not black there? I did. I'll be honest. That joke's like a week old, and I don't know why I did it. And uh, right. I haven't so like you written. Can still all, abort. I could. I could. Yeah, it's under six weeks, so I think I'm still good. Go. Uh, I, go. I didn't write down all the names for a black person and then decide on that. I just pulled Which it out of the hat. Which leads us to believe yeah. that you might use this word more often than just in that bit. <laughs> It would actually make more sense if you had an explanation for it. I apologize for the joke to anyone that was offended. Uh, you Wait, can DM me directly. Tony, how old is he? He might be 75 or something like that. What does that mean? Oh, I see, yeah. because old... It's I'm 33. Old. I'm 33, 33 years, years old. old. Yeah. Okay. What do you do for work? I do project management stuff. What kind of uh, project uh, management? Boring stuff in tech, like large company stuff. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Yeah, like, what do you do for fun? Like, what's an outlet for you? you honest, like, I think I'm a boring person. I do a lot of comedy. Uh, I've, I've been doing more of it. Yeah, my timing. <laughs> Somebody, our re- one of our resident We've audience We've had some bad sets here. tonight. Let's act like me going for glory. It's not like... The comedy was not yeah. the right answer there. Uh, tell us, when you're not doing comedy, what do you do for fun? Uh, I used to work out a lot, but, like, I kind of do that <laughs> now. Yeah. <laughs> I used to. I'm 33. I used to. Very rarely do people get yeah. more laughs during the interview part than their uh, minute-long set, but you're really working the room here right now. Yeah. What happened? Why did you stop working out? I hurt my foot and then COVID. Okay. Like those two things. Yeah. I used to play a lot of basketball and then uh, just I fell out of that. it. I yeah. could see that. I could see you trying to post up against somebody. <laughs> all hips. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Maybe big boxer outer. I have to play fundamentals. I'm a, fun, a below-the-rim Right. Team team oriented player, yeah. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. You went like that when you did that. Are you jerking it's off your teammates? Oh, okay, pass. Very good. Uh, so was any of that true? You were in a relationship for two years, then yeah. she brought in a third person. That was couples a, counseling, yeah. right? Yeah, right. So you just went to counseling. Couples. Well, I've done individual counseling. I think more men should, but also I've done couples counseling for like a year and a half. And you guys are still together. We actually just got engaged. Yeah. Wow. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So things are good. Yeah, I mean, just got like two weeks ago. So, yeah, pretty good. Where, did you propose somewhere special? You seem like the kind of guy that would have done it at an Aust- Austin soccer game or something like yeah, that. Yeah, no. Uh, so, I was, I was... At that weird carnival off the 270 or whatever it is? Yeah. <laughs> Seems like you would pick a special Austin place, right? Something. Yeah, I was uh, planning uh, like a... In front of the I love you so much painting on the side of that one building. Bucky's. <laughs> yes. Yeah, I know. I uh, was planning a uh, like surprise thing, and then her dad told someone who told her. So it was like, who's this someone? I don't like one of her aunts or something. It's, it's unclear to me who the rat was. I haven't like Ooh. launched an investigation. Sounds but like it was dad. Yeah, she was like, "Why are you planning a trip with my dad in Vegas?" And it was like, "Oh, oh." So you it um, was in Vegas. She found out. In, I live in Dallas. She found out in Dallas that I was planning a thing in Vegas, which would have been. But you did You ended up not doing that instead. Well, when she found out, I was just like, yeah, so let's... And we've been, like, planning it now together. I don't know. He has Dallas energy. She found out I was going to propose. Yeah. And instead, it was just like, yes, I do. And then we've been planning the wedding for, like, the last two weeks. What was going to be a proposal party is now a wedding. What scares you? (sighs) The idea of, like, losing my mental health, going crazy, shit like that. Right. Do you ever see that happening? Did that happen? Does that run in your family? I have a big family history of it, yeah. It does. What what runs in your family? Almost everything. Yeah. Like, Like, bipolar, PTSD, schizophrenia, a lot of of different. 
Okay. Heavy shit, yeah. Have you ever thought about wearing a cape and one glove? Because <laughs> then we would know something's <laughs> wrong. For sure. Yeah. Yeah. Josh, very, very interesting. Any yeah. special skills or talents that you have? Obviously not comedy. Um... <laughs> Yeah, I uh You're good at making people go, Aw. Aw. You're like really good at that. Have you ever thought about making that your thing? Like what well, if you could tell me like what that is, I would love to apply for it. <laughs> I don't Holy shit! <laughs> there it is. His bread right, and yeah, butter, yeah. folks. The aw guy. <laughs> you yeah. could be a little puppy. <laughs> yeah. I love it. Okay. Your greatest talent that isn't comedy. Uh I it almost got me in trouble. I did startup stuff for a while, so like I Invented a shitty app. There you go. Wow. That was forced. That felt. That felt. That felt forced. No, yeah. that felt pretty yeah. natural to me. Yeah, yeah. Austin people aren't really into startups. This is fucking. <laughs> so what are we talking about? What are we? What is it? Fire festival. Yeah. It's gonna be great this year, guys. All right. <laughs> you're wild. Yeah, I love the show. Uh, you're contributing a lot as a guest host. I love what you're doing. That's awesome. I love your music. Yeah, he's really... being cool, Josh. Yeah. Why don't you fucking try it, you little bitch? I gotta ask you, why did you stare at me in the face when you said colored people? Women, do it, class. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Motherfucker. Wow, you're trying to take shots at the throne at a fucking rock star up I'm trying here. to be cool. Yeah, man. <laughs> All right? Listen, I don't do this. I respect comedians. I respect the whole craft. Tony, call me. I don't know why the fuck I'm here either, <laughs> but I'm here. All right? Yeah, I, I was just trying to deflect. House. I was just trying to deflect because I don't felt... Don't fuck with me. Really? I love it. Gary Clark Jr. is here. Austin Zone. A goddamn rock star. <laughs> How dare you? Can we get Joe Rogan's pillow on stage, though, for Gary? Yeah. <laughs> All right. Uh, um, uh, Josh. Oh, shit. Congratu congratulations. Congratulations. Congratulations Thank you. on your Thank wedding you. yeah. or on your uh, marriage and everything. And uh, I'm glad. Hopefully, yeah. hopefully the future is brighter for you than it was here tonight. Josh <laughs> Thank Stram, you. Thank everybody. You. There he goes. We have not had a female comedian on yet tonight. Should I pull until we get a lady up here, huh? All right, let's see what happens here. Not John, not Brendan, not Bobby, not Mikey, not Darian. Okay. Okay. Is Cyber Sandy a real person? A Cyber female? Sandy? Is, it a, is, it a is this female? a female? Cyber Sandy? This seems too good to be true. Oh, here she comes. It's real. Cyber Sandy is on her way to the stage. Come on, one more time for Cyber Sandy, everyone. What the fuck is up, Vulcan? I sat most of y'all tonight, and when I heard my name, I was gonna like fly down the stairs and run over here. Um, I am a very anxious person, and I have a bad habit of putting myself in really bad situations. Um, I recently got married. <laughs> no, 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 no. That's not the bad situation. Like, I love him, he's great, but like, he doesn't fix my anxiety. Like, he's out of town this weekend, and right before he left, he was like, well, I gotta show you how to use the gun. And I'm like, we're on the way to the airport. Not right now. Stressed, stressed, like how I'm feeling right now. Um, so, is everyone having fun tonight? Okay, I sat most of y'all and I was like, okay, what table are you? Let's go find it together. Cause I'm here every Monday and I still don't know the fucking table numbers. So, um, Thank you for being here tonight, and that's my time. There you go, Cyber Sandy. How yeah. exciting. This is all true? You work here? You sat people yes. tonight? That's so weird yeah. that they let the cleaning crew seat people here. It's that's my, amazing. It's, it's my pleasure. It's so nice. You always go above and beyond. You 
No, do it with a smile. Cyber Sandy, how long have you worked here? Um, I don't know. I think, <laughs> like, maybe a year. Really? Or, or how do we every, not know every, you? Every Monday you've <laughs> no. been here? I'm silently in the background. Wow. This makes me nervous. Like, can you all hear my voice shaking? Woo. That's I'm with you. I feel yeah, the you same. You can tell. You yeah. can tell. <laughs> you literally did better than everybody else pulled out of the bucket tonight. With barely any... All you had to do was stay somewhat present and acknowledge anything that was happening in the room to do so. And you yeah. did that, which is incredible. Thank you. I mean, how long... I wrote jokes. You did. I don't know if you did any of them, but you <laughs> you definitely wrote them. That's good. Time. That's half the battle. Writing yeah. is half the battle. Definitely. Once you perform, who knows what can happen. There you go. I love it. So, Cyber Sandy, how long have you been doing stand-up? This is the first time in my life. I've Whoa. Been wow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. wow. I don't know what happens next, though. I'm just, like, shot in the shadows, like, watching, observing. Right. So, yeah. Very, very interesting. Is yeah. this something you've always wanted to do? Um, I mean, I feel like I can be honest. Um, and thank you. Um, so, like, you know how they say there's two types of girls, like, you know, the late bloomers, the... You know, the other type. No, no, no. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> you feel like you have something to say? I got nothing. That makes two of us. What exactly are you talking about? You're late bloomers and so, you're what? Yeah, I mean... Did you start your period? No, oh. honestly, yeah. like... John. I was a... <laughs> There's two types of women, whores and hoes, nice. according to John. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, John Dees, local rock star, for describing the two different types of women that there that. are. Like That's it. it. That's it. Cold as yeah, ice Dees. over here. I love it. So what are you talking about? Late bloomers so, and what? Are you yeah, going through I mean, puberty right now? What are we talking about here? Yeah, basically. No, as a kid, I would dress up as a clown and like do family parties. And so I always knew this was, like, for me. So like, wait a second. Hold on. You used to dress up like a clown. Yeah, and, like, the problem was, like, again, putting yourself in really bad situations. Like, for me, it was an opportunity to, like, make family friends, have a great birthday party, but you can't just be the clown that stands around. Like, that's so scary. So I learned how to make balloon animals. And I had a whole operation. And I was a little entrepreneur at 11. It was great. I would make $100 a party. You'd make $100 yes, a party? Holy shit, that is a pricey yeah. clown. I didn't realize clowns gave out hand jobs at these no, parties. No, 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 <laughs> it's no, incredible. No, I was a mad kind of clown. My goodness. And w when you were clowning around, what types of things would you do other than balloon animals? Give us um, an example. So honestly, it's funny because my sister tells me like she's younger. I'm 28. She turns 27 soon, and she was like my most vivid typical Latina. One year of separation for those of you. Most likely yeah. 10 months. Okay. My sister's 27. We have a brother 26. Sister 25. It's sister like 24. Months. My brother's 23. Hey. There you go. Hell yeah. I can't, I can't help I it. I love it. I can't help it. I love so, it. So, yeah, no, it's like I knew that I was always silly, and I was like, I got to pursue this. So thanks for the opportunity. Right, indeed. So you were a clown for a while, so this is something that you've always wanted to do. Yeah. And now here you are. You've been working here for a year, and you waited. Yeah. Have you been signing up regularly? No, this is the first night I sign up. Wh wow. <laughs> Very, very interesting. I'm like still shaking. Right. Okay. I love it. Um, I'm sure. And what do you do for a living? Like an actual living? I'm in tech. You're in tech? Yeah. All right. And yeah. uh, you have a family? You have a boyfriend? Kids? Uh, just recently got married. Uh -huh. um, you know. Yeah. Hey, any married people? Okay. I uh -oh. see a bride over there. Bride to be, honey. Oh, shit. Yeah. Yep. Look at that one. Um, but yeah. 
Look at that one, a real spectacle over there. <laughs> at Kill Tony, wearing the fucking, the I veil. Love it. Let's go. Bad decisions. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, the bad decisions have already started. I don't know if you've seen tonight's episode, Cyber Sandy, but... I've been here. No, I love I it. I bring my cape, but... Um, so you... You know, I shouldn't have my back facing that way, actually. But... Your uh, new husband, what does he do for work? He's also in tech. He's actually... I'm picking him up in, like... 15 minutes. Oh, shit. From oh, where? Yeah. Where are you picking them up at? Up front of a Home Depot? <laughs> oh, come on. That's so rude, dude. Oh, my God. Like, like what kind of tech do you guys do? Like, like the Taco Bell app or, like, torches? Oh, my or? God. No. Red Band. Innovative. Red Band. Why would you say that? Innovative. Do you do the Taco Bell app? No, 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 no. No. What kind of tech do you do? Are you... Um, so I'm a consultant, and I just enable our customers to use our product. Okay. Yeah. All right. How about for fun? What does someone like you do for fun? Honestly, like, the ha-has. Like, oh, my gosh. You guys are here. You know. I'm Wait, here. what? <laughs> the ha-has. The ha-has. Yeah. Not the ja 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 jas Like the Spanish ja <laughs> The ha-has. Oh. <laughs> The ha highs. I'm here for the ha highs. You're here. It's like time is precious, and I'm here laughing with all these ratchet people. Like yes, what? yes. Ratchet yeah. indeed. I will be honest though, Tony. I this is maybe like my fourth or fifth Tony Kill Tony night. Uh -huh. I've been doing the Red Band like Thursdays. They're a lot of fun. Uh -huh. But like. The first Kill Tony night, uh -huh. it was a man in a wheelchair, a man with a stutter, another special ed person, and I came home. No. Wait, why night. are you guys laughing at that? Why are you guys laughing at my show? No, wait, stop it. Stop no, I don't like that laugh you guys are doing. No, Leave stop, alone, stop. It's no, getting it's worse. Okay. Everybody's laughing at my no, big no, dumb no. show. They're all gonna laugh at you. I just wanna show. say I fell at home. Absolutely. Yeah. Welcome. Yeah. Welcome indeed. All right. There's Thank you all so much. This is my time. Oh wow, you're just gonna leave. Okay. All right. There's you know what? I like it. Cyber Sandy. Here, take a joke book. Have a big one for your first time ever. There she goes, Cyber Sandy. She's adorable. I'm sure we'll see her again. Uh, all right. This has been a pretty wild episode. Lady getting married. You didn't sign up, did you? No. Did anyone at your table? No. Eh, forget it. There's only one way to end an episode like this, ladies and gentlemen, and it is with the longest standing regular in the history of the show. This young man just spent the entire weekend with me in Phoenix, Arizona, featuring for me, doing long 25-minute sets with no note cards, five sold-out shows in one of the largest comedy clubs in the world, Stand Up Live was lugged around to the UFC right next to the Octagon for his first time ever and flew private this weekend for his first time in his life. This is the ever-growing, the Memphis Strangler, the Big Red Machine, William Lights Out Montgomery. I know that bitch wasn't talking about me. <laughs> Red Band looks like if Fred Durst started eating manga characters. Federal investigators are supposedly horrified by what they found on Hunter Biden's laptop, but even more disturbed by what they didn't find, the game Minesweeper. 
You know that dumbass be trying to play some hot sweeper. Joy Behar is telling women that to protest stricter abortion laws, women should withhold sex from their husbands. In breaking news, her husband was last seen erecting a huge sign in their front yard that says, Outlaw Abortion. (laughs) (laughs) Hey, Red Band, your mom is so old, she got wool breast implants, and she suffers severe complications to this day, and I'm praying for her health. (laughs) Red Band's mom is super sick right now. Federal investigators are supposedly horrified by what they found on Hunter Biden's laptop, but even more disturbed by what they didn't find, Napster. You know that dumbass be downloading music on Napster! Okay. (laughs) Wow, he did it again. Rapid fire. Non-stop. This is another young man, another regular on this show that has uh, relentlessly shown an incredible amount of growth to a week-to-week basis. He's uh, staring down Tony, Red can I, ask, can I ask a question? Like, do you know that my mom went to the hospital the other day? Do you know? Yeah, that's why I said that wow, fucking joke. <laughs> that's fucked up. Man. Why do you think I fucking said it? That's fucked up. You're I know de- she's not doing good right now, and it was Mother's Day yesterday. Why the fuck do you think I said it, Red Man? I mean, it's just kind of fucked up. Uh, <laughs> like, seriously, like, it's pretty serious. Shut the fuck up. No, <laughs> no it's not. Like, it's real. No, it's not. Dude, I uh, have been checking my phone all night to see if the operation's okay. Nuh-uh. Yeah. There Red Band, There's don't a tell me of this. his mom right here. He's looking at a picture. Show William. No, 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 no. Show no, 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 William. No, no, that's not cool. Red Band, it was I, a I horrible don't... mistake, man. How was I supposed to know your mom was actually sick? I'm sorry, man. Your dad gave her gonorrhea, man. Oh, Shut the fuck wow. up! Wow, Red Band. <laughs> right, not a lot of you know that Red Band is a roast genius. Yeah. He just made fun of William by saying that William's father had sex with his mother. And gave her gonorrhea. No, That's no, no, how no. no. William's, roast- William's mom gave William's Shut dad gonorrhea. Shut the fuck up, dude. You're out of control tonight. Fucking stop. And yeah, I know that your mom is fucking sick, you One dumbass. One of the greatest yellers in all of comedy. Yeah. William Montgomery yeah. absolutely smashed. Makes it funnier. You absolutely killed all these shows in Phoenix. So much so that I found out a little rumor that you did so good featuring for me that at the end of this week, you're going to be featuring for one a guy that I look up to, that I, whose stand-up that I love, Duncan Trussell, this week. <laughs> I'm going back to Phoenix, y'all! I'm going back to the desert, y'all! They love you out in Phoenix. It was fun out there. It was so hot during the day. It was. It was burning up, and it felt a lot better at nighttime. The temperature really drops out there in the desert. William takes care of his (laughs) very, very, very fair skin. Uh, fairer. Yep. Some people say his skin is fairer than the Supreme Court. So, <laughs> um, and Arizona is rough on you. He had a plethora of sunscreens and visors. He carries around an umbrella with him, ladies yep. and gentlemen. This man is a rock star. He knows it. He protects the features. He's filled with freckles. He had more freckles than I've ever seen in. Tony, why would you bring up that I have to carry around a fucking umbrella? That's so <laughs> embarrassing. Self-care. Self-care. I respect it. Yeah, it's called self-care. I have to carry around a fucking umbrella. Do you see how fair my skin? Literally, I've been fucking walking around with an umbrella for like the past five fucking years. <laughs> Whenever I'm outside, if it's raining, I have an umbrella. When it's sunny, I have an umbrella. Just literally all the fucking time. I can't believe you would have said that, Tony. What about when it's just partly cloudy what do you have then i have a fucking umbrella i literally have an umbrella just in case whenever i leave my fucking house the yelling has been working (laughs) for him believe it or not we did uh again one of the largest comedy clubs in the world stand up live i believe it seats like something crazy 700 people not exactly sure of the numbers i let my uh agent take care of those logistics you know what i mean (laughs) but anyway you screaming out into this 
massive, massive venue of people. It absolutely destroys. You had fun this weekend, right? It was fun. I had a wonderful time. I and literally had to- the best fucking weekend of my life. If Cracker Barrel Kid 55 is fucking watching this right now, fuck you, dude! William speaks directly to his haters on the internet. Quit sending me fucking messages! <laughs> Cracker Barrel Kid literally won't fucking stop. I can't find out who it is. I don't know who it is. What is he saying to you? Bobby Lee can give you the IP numbers if oh, you need Oh, shit. You better, you better chill out. They have a lot of drama this week with... Uh... Red me- <laughs> Oh, no. The joint I was smoking earlier really just hit me, and I'm up here a little terrified just thinking, I'm tired of screaming. Literally in Phoenix, my voice fucking went out after the second show. I didn't know what the fuck to do. I couldn't talk. William sat (laughs) with me a very extremely high-level security breach this Saturday at the UFC. We sat next to the octagon directly together. Literally, you could touch the octagon from our seats, and uh, you made it that close. Explain to these people what your first UFC was like. It was very exciting. Yeah, we went in between the shows. After the first show, we walked back, and we had these wristbands, but it didn't really matter because we walked in just the front, And the lady's like, oh, what are y'all doing? And Tony's like, oh, we can make it through. Don't worry. And she's like, what? And then Tony just keeps walking, and I'm just like, oh, my God. And I follow wristbands that basically means we we can do whatever we want. means we're part of the staff for the arena that night. But basically, I did have a gun in my back pocket. (laughs) Yeah. He did go through the metal detector with a gun. He set it off. It was set off. Yeah, I eventually, we pretty much just had to run in. But I swear to you, I saw, I think it was, what, Dana Gold is his name? The no, UFC guy? Dana White. Dana, Dana Gold's White. the comedian. Dana White is the <laughs> that's billionaire right. owner and creator of the UFC. You always think Dana Gold for some reason. Dana Gold, head. again, a, uh, a, uh, a, uh, a, 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 We're going to have to cut this out. Long-time stand-up comedian, not really known for... But M- much. But yeah, we're sitting down there. We saw that one guy get kicked in the face. I thought I was watching somebody die because he yeah. was breathing weird and just Damn. wouldn't move. And I was horrified. I didn't realize how violent the UFC actually was. Did y'all realize this? Yeah. Not exactly a bunch of guys walking around with umbrellas out there. Oh my God. <laughs> it was violent. It was brutal. It was violent. No greater fight than those UV rays. <laughs> I have to fucking check my arms and legs every time I come in after a sunny day looking for skin cancer. It's a nightmare. You really don't know how, how it is right on. Special. It is very special out there traveling with you, getting to walk around with Danny DeVito's penguin from Batman. <laughs> William with an umbrella. I, meanwhile, I'm trying to be cool. And I'm out there walking around with this fucking redhead. Puffy Montgomery. That's funny. It is like Danny DeVito in that. I have like a suit on and I have my umbrella. Yeah. It was very, very bizarre. <laughs> Sometimes he spins it around and like does weird <laughs> things. Sort of dance around and I'll spin the umbrella around a little bit. And to close out the weekend, you got to fly private for the first time ever on a private jet. William Montgomery, first time in his life. How did that feel? It was exciting. I mean, literally, when I walked through, there wasn't a metal detector there, so I was able to just bring the gun on the plane. I've never been able to bring a gun on an airplane before. It was very exciting. Guns, drugs, you can fly with anything when you want when you reach another level. Isn't that wild? It was so crazy. I was like, yeah, I could have a bunch of cocaine on me right now. I mean, I already have this gun. Yeah, (laughs) I could fucking totally have something else. Yeah, you could do anything you want at that point. But it was scary. I'm glad we made it. I'm very scared of airplanes. I'm very happy we made it safely. I was a little worried. Was it Just turbulent? Like the, uh, no, there's no fucking. Was turbulent. it turbulent? <laughs> <laughs> Shut the fuck up, you dumbass. Was it turbulent? You sound like such a bitch. Oh yeah. At least I can go out in the sunny little. Shut bitch. the fuck up. <laughs> Uh, I, I see a spot right Shut now. Shut the fuck up. No, you don't see a spot. Yeah, you have a little spot. Yeah, I see a couple spots. Oh, no, I shit. don't. 
No, I don't. Oh my goodness! Aww. You can't see any fucking Aww. spots your on body me right now. Your... Shut the Aww. fuck Aww. up! What a weak immune system. What do you mean you can see spots? Shut up! That's such a weird thing to say up here. Well, right now. Wow, this is um. I've seen this a lot on <laughs> the internet, and it's weird to be in the middle of YouTube. <laughs> This is the real deal. <laughs> what the fuck? I man? find myself this between intense. this intensity every single Monday. It's, this I guy representing attention. the Waffle House. Hey, I'll, I'll smother you. He this does guy. look like Fred Durst. He kind of looks like Fred Durst. Kind of. He's like Fred Worst. <laughs> <laughs> hey. He's like Limp Biscuits and Gravy. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's get out of here. That's William Montgomery. Guys, we are not worthy to be in his presence. Make some noise for my friend Gary Clark Jr., everybody. Shout out to Tony, all you comedians, the band. This shit is not easy. I got the best seat in the house, and I got free drinks. So I appreciate (laughs) you all, man. Hell yeah. Thank you, Gary, for fucking coming out and joining us. How about a hand for the band one more time, everybody? Matt Mueling on guitar. B Madness on bass. Michael Gonzalez on drums. And that's the great John Dees on the keys getting ready for his big European tour with Gary. Also catch uh, John Dees at uh, the gallery on South Congress uh, later tonight if you're out and about. Also, the official Kill Tony after party featuring Nether Hour starts now and before we go, here's tonight's drawing of tonight's episode from the great Ryan J. Ebelt, who draws every episode. Look at that. Live in the flesh. RyanJEbelt.com for all those prints. We're doing the show every single week, of course, sold out for the unbelievably foreseeable future. And we love it that you guys all travel and make your trips here from wherever you came from here tonight. So thank you so much, and we'll see you again soon. Good love night, you. everybody. Thank you.